there is a place where water has turned a desert into paradise. Creating an oasis that shimmers with vivid beauty. Renewed each year by an ancient river. It is a diverse and astonishing wilderness. A spectacle like no other on earth. Where Africa's iconic animals flourish. Drawn together by water's life-giving force. This is the Great Okavango Delta. Lifeblood of the Kalahari. It's midwinter in the northern Kalahari. The peak of the dry season. This arid savanna landscape receives less than 500 millimeters of annual rain. Only the most accomplished dry land survivors can exist here. But in the middle of this ancient desert lies an unlikely wildlife haven. Its incredible story starts thousands of kilometers away. Eight months ago, fed by the rains in the Angolan highlands, the Okavango River began to flow southeast. Carrying 10 billion cubic meters of water, it flows for 1,600 kilometers, finally reaching an ancient floodplain in Botswana. Here, it fans out into a myriad of channels, streams, and lagoons, gradually spreading to cover some 16,000 square kilometers, bringing relief to the once scorched earth and providing an oasis for thousands of animals. Their subsistence tied together by a river that never finds the ocean, but transforms one of Africa's great deserts into a water world wonderland. The Okavango Delta is truly the lifeblood of the Kalahari. <laughs> Few animals are more at home in the Okavango Delta than the massive hippopotamus. Males can grow up to three tons. They have sharp tusks that can grow as long as 50 centimeters, contained in powerful jaws. But they are vegetarians, and these canines are used for territorial fighting. This combination of power and weaponry makes them deadly. Hippos kill more humans in Africa than any other mammal. Around them, it's best to beware. But they have a weakness. Sensitive skin. So they spend most of the day submerged, avoiding the sun. This young calf 
will even suckle below the water. Bonds between mothers and daughters can last for years. Waterways and broad grassy islands are their perfect natural habitat. Hippos follow regular routes through the delta's dense vegetation, where swamps are lined by one of the fastest growing plants on earth. Papyrus. This giant sedge is the same plant that the ancient Egyptians once used to make paper. The fibrous stems they favored for their scrolls are so tough they are indigestible to almost all animals. The plant grows quickly into dense, almost impenetrable levees that block the flow of water into the thirsty surroundings. But with their huge bulk and constant aquatic movement, hippos carve paths through the thick papyrus, allowing water to flow away from the swamp's main channels and feed the land around it, making hippos integral animal architects in the dynamic Okavango ecosystem. The hippos share their domain with a multitude of winged neighbors. The Okavango Delta is home to 482 species of birds, including some 33 water birds. This high density means that each bird has developed special ways to avoid conflict for resources, causing some remarkable adaptations, like the aptly named African spoonbills. Together, they move through the water, searching for small fish. Their broad, flat beaks ideally formed to snap up unsuspecting prey. The open-billed stork has a very different specialization. Its curved bill has a gap of just under six millimeters. This odd shape helps them grasp and open aquatic snails and mussels to get to the tender flesh inside. This adaptation is so successful that the open build is one of the most common of African storks. The black heron's strategy is more elaborate. The reason for their so-called sun umbrella wing shaping is still debated. Some suggest it decreases glare on the water's surface, making it easier to spot prey. Others argue it creates a seemingly safe, shady refuge for fish. And the trickery goes a step further. The heron wiggles its yellow toes in the mud, which may well attract fish like a bright lure. Another master stalker of the Okavango is the Hammerkop, named for its hammer-shaped head. Although it has a simpler approach, it is generally an effective predator. Its prey of choice is frogs, but today it's not having much luck finding them. The resourceful hunter opts for a different technique, dive bombing off a well-placed island. The hippo bull doesn't seem to mind being used as a hunting platform. A 
and the hammer cop strategy pays off past his prime and long since banished from the herd the old hippo bull now makes this lonely wallow his home where even the company of the noisy hammer cops is better than none Other clever water birds also employ temporary hippo islands. Like the Okavango's deep water expert, the African data. It has body plumage that holds water and heavier bones than other bird species. These act like a diver's weight belt, allowing it to dive for more than a minute and a half, up to 6 meters deep. But wet feathers can reduce body temperatures to a dangerous level, forcing darters to dry themselves in the sun between dives. As the winter floods arrive and flow through the delta's system, they support more than just aquatic life. The abundance of water fuels enough plant growth to feed Africa's giants. A 5-ton elephant bull needs around 300 kilograms of food a day. And the delta provides enough food to support more than 100,000 elephants. Making it one of the last strongholds for these largest of land mammals. Good news for the African jacana. It follows in the elephant's wake, snapping up insects disturbed by the mammoth feet. Jacanas thrive in the delta. Their elongated toes easily hold their small bodies aloft. allowing them to travel light on floating islands for the jacanas prime property must include a foundation for nests feeding grounds and stepping stones across the surface for the latter one plant fits the bill perfectly water lilies Their long stalks have air canals keeping the plant afloat allowing buds to blossom above the surface Around 5 days later the stalk retracts in a spiral pulling the fertilized bloom back under water where it will develop into a fruit later erupting with seeds to be spread by the current as the delta's waters inundate the landscape lilies abound and they are relished by some this elephant isn't going to let a mouthful of grit ruin his meal crimps and it's ready to eat While the elephants devour stalks 
the Chakma baboon is more particular. He's only after the roots. Dexterous hands and opposable thumbs allow baboons to pick the juiciest bits of the lilies. Although they can survive in the driest corners of the continent, in the delta, Chakma baboons thrive. Here, their population density is six times as great as the Chakma baboons living in the nearby Namib desert. This family is 50 strong, meaning there are always eyes peeled for predators. When you're off guard, strength in numbers is crucial. Troops have strict hierarchies, determining access to the best forage. A flash of razor-sharp canines is sufficient warning to back off. Babies ride jockey-style on their mother's backs from between 6 and 12 weeks old. Baboons have incredibly varied diets, eating everything from grasses and fruit to insects, and on the rare occasion, even small antelope. But for now, these youngsters are too distracted to eat. <coughs> Troops can cover up to 15 kilometers a day while foraging. Their long arms allow for efficient movement and foraging on the ground. All of these factors have made baboons one of the most successful primates in Africa. But the floods also bring danger. Water levels restrict movement, forcing them to travel along predictable routes on their daily journeys. And they're not the only ones using these routes. With its abundance of animal life, the delta is home to many predators. And none is more dangerous to baboons than the leopard. Weighing around 60 kilograms, his short, powerful legs keep him low to the ground where he is camouflaged against the delta's long grass. This male patrols his territory, which can cover just under 400 square kilometers. He has unique markings of black dots and roughly broken circles called rosettes that take infinite forms, meaning no two leopards are alike. Leopards are the most widespread of all wild African cats, occurring across the continent. Solitary and secretive, adults associate only for long enough to mate. This male scent marks his territory fastidiously, a warning to other males and an advertisement to any females in the area. Being more active at night, he may travel as far as 25 kilometers under the cover of darkness. The arrival of the floods ensures a variety of small herbivores in his territory. As long as they remain fed, so will he.
The Delta is the lifeblood for carnivore and herbivore alike, providing food in abundance. And the African buffalo prefers an early breakfast. This gregarious grazer thrives in the Okavango. They are some of the heavier Okavango inhabitants, weighing as much as 800 kilograms, and have developed symbiotic relationships with birds like oxpeckers and cattle egrets, which exchange a cleaning service for meals of ticks. The buffalo drinks at least once a day. But there is an animal here that has a greater need for water. Red lechwe. They are among the most water dependent of all antelopes. Locally common to the Okavango, they thrive on new growth along the margins of floodplains. To make the most of this feeding niche, Lechwe follow the water's seasonal advance and retreat. But the Lechwe needs the delta for more than just food. When threatened, they head for water. Powerful legs and a leaping gait enable them to travel quickly across the floodplains, where they are safe from most predators, but not all. The depths hold one of the delta's most successful predators, the Nile crocodile. Large specimens can grow to five meters long and weigh more than a ton. With eyes and nostrils on top of their heads, they are well adapted for ambush tactics beneath the surface. They hunt for mainly fish and large mammals. The lechwe would make an excellent meal, but on dry land, the crocodile stands no chance of catching them. There are other, more substantial options on the reptilian hunter's menu. Waterbuck are twice the lechwe's size. Males weigh in at around 230 kilograms and sport impressive curved horns, which can reach lengths of almost a meter. These handsome antelope need to drink several times a day to avoid dehydration. Unlike the lechwe, they prefer dry grassland for grazing and retreat to the cover of vegetation when threatened. This combination of factors makes viable territories hard to come by. But the delta provides for all their needs. A breeding male will sometimes tolerate the presence of a younger bachelor, as long as he doesn't attempt to mate with any females. But at around six years, the younger male thinks he's ready to challenge for dominance. A challenge that is quickly dispatched with. Baboon troops are also governed by strength. And this alpha male has won the right to breed. Mating is often a public affair accompanied by a telltale call. If the female conceives, the troop will have a new member in six months. Copulation is often followed by grooming, a crucial tool in maintaining group cohesion and cementing relationships between troop members. 
While some species rely directly on the delta's waters, this greater kudu herd have a less direct dependence. Although they need to drink, kudu can go for longer periods without water than lechwe and waterbuck. For them, the delta's dense vegetation is key, providing both sustenance and cover from predators, making the Okavango Islands excellent habitat for the kudu. This bull is fully mature, with an impressive set of horns. Growing up to almost 180 centimeters, they are the longest horns of any antelope. While Kudu aren't territorial, he has something here worth fighting for. A cow. Kudu are seasonal breeders, and with the delta in full flood, now is the time for this pair. But for elephants, reproduction can be an altogether more dramatic affair. African elephants live in breeding herds of related cows, led by a matriarch. But there's a large bull in this herd, attracted by a cow in estrus. He's not the only male around, and another bull attempts to impose himself on the young cow. Scenes like this are not uncommon and cows often escape. The chase ends only if the bull can catch her. But the larger bull will not tolerate this kind of behavior, emitting deep rumbles in warning. After the drama, the herd heads off for a cool, calming drink. And what better for an African elephant after quenching its thirst than a wallow in the mud? The mud helps cool the elephants and protects their skin from the harsh African sun. It also acts as a pest deterrent. After coating themselves, elephants will scratch off the thick layer, removing parasites with it. Having utilized the abundance of water and mud here in the delta, the herd is well equipped to continue its day. Elephants aren't the only ones enjoying the Okavango's masses of mud. Warthogs 
love a good mud bath. These are the only pigs adapted to grazing in a savanna habitat. But they don't have the elephant's advantage of a long trunk. Kneeling allows them access to short grass. Like the elephants, they also have ivory tusks. Growing to as long as 60 centimeters, they are used largely in fights with other warthogs. The thick protruding lumps of skin below the eye protect the hogs from serious harm. But it's the shorter, lower tusks which inflict the real damage. They grind against the upper tusks to form a razor-sharp point. Used to slash and stab in self-defense against predators. But even the toughest quarry may fall prey to an experienced killer. An adult warthog met its demise overnight. Leopards will catch and kill almost anything, including reptiles, birds and fish. But they prey mainly on mammals, suffocated with a strangling bite. A full-grown warthog weighs around 65 kilograms. A big meal for the leopard. He may return to feed on the same carcass for days, stashing it in the safety of a tree out of the reach of scavengers. But for now, well-fed and content, relaxation is the order of the day. While predators like leopard and crocodile thrive on land and in water, another formidable creature dominates the delta's skies. The majestic African fish eagle. The Okavango Delta's swamps, channels and lagoons provide habitats for more fish eagles than anywhere else on the continent. These powerful eagles hunt from elevation swooping down to nab fish as heavy as three kilograms. Yet despite their reputation for fishing, these raptors are known thieves, stealing fish from birds, including kingfishers and saddle-billed storks. But the saddle-billed stork is an unlikely victim, as it towers over the eagles at a meter and a half tall and weighs up to seven kilograms. Like the fish eagles, saddlebills form monogamous breeding pairs. But they are relatively scarce, with only one pair per 100 square kilometers in the delta. They use their colorful bills to spear and grasp prey, easily seen in the shallow pools. This fish is a substantial meal. But swallowing it presents a challenge. The stork's struggle has caught the attention of the fish eagle. But he arrives too late. Having missed out on stealing a meal from the stork, the eagle finds easier pickings in the form of a large nest of young red-billed buffalo weavers. 
The baby birds are a valuable source of extra protein for the raptor. For the fish eagle, its early years of life can be tough. It takes up to five years for the birds to gain their adult plumage. Until then, their youth is betrayed by motley speckles and grey facial skin. Driven from their early homes, the juveniles are forced to lead a nomadic existence. Roaming between areas not already under the control of territorial adults. These unclaimed areas can be few and far between, resulting in congregations of youngsters. In the fifth year of life, facial skin yellows. But remaining breast speckles still have to give way before they are ready to compete with other adults for riverside real estate. While the young fish eagles are just starting out in life, this old buffalo bull is in his twilight years. Unable to compete with younger, fitter males for dominance within a herd, he has been exiled. As buffaloes get older, they lose the hair on their sides, and his hairless flank reveals his advanced age. Life in the Delta means crossing channels like these regularly. And the buffalo has learned to be wary of what lurks beneath the surface. But a juvenile crocodile is far too small to pose a threat. His bulk makes him immune to all except the largest predators, free to live out his last few seasons in wandering solitude. Meanwhile, not far upstream, another old bull is using his most remarkable attribute, his trunk. Elephants have the most inclusive diet of any herbivore. Even the incredibly fibrous papyrus isn't inedible to him. his powerful yet dexterous trunk, made up of more than 50,000 muscles, to choose the tastiest leaves. To power such massive bodies, elephants must spend up to 16 hours a day feeding. Working their trunks almost endlessly. are the ultimate combination of dexterity and strength. A fitting icon for the great Okavango.